Let's go live to Parliament for more on this now. Joined by our reporter there, Arti Mtungana. Arti, good afternoon to you. Four billion rand, a huge amount of money. Tells us what's been happening at Eskom. What's the special, what's the scope t saying about it this afternoon? But it's interesting that they mentioned that about 131 criminal cases have been referred to the South African police. However, there is a bit of delay there insofar as processing those cases. But I am joined by the chairperson of the committee, Mkulego Tlingwa. Thank you for your time. You came on in hard towards the end of the session where you were basically reiterating a sentiment that I'm sure a lot of South Africans share with regards to load shedding when you asked whether it's going to be be something that's going to be permanent? Well, <clears throat> the core mandate of ESCOM is to provide uh, electricity to the country and provide energy certainty um, for South Africans and the economy. Therefore, it can't be an open-ended you know, reality. <clears throat> there has to be a deliberate effort to actually push back on the frontiers of load shedding. And that means dealing with the systemic challenges um, at ESCOM. It's dealing with the corruption. It's ensuring that there's efforts towards a meaningful um, consequence management. It's about turning the organization around and instilling a culture and a discipline of accountability um, at the institution, which um, continues at this point to be fast lacking. <clears throat> and so it's very, very important, therefore, that after all is said and done, we must go back to ground zero, and ground zero is that ESCOM must provide, not maybe, not should, uh, as and when. It's a must. It's a, it's, it's a responsibility which is the embodiment of their existence. They, they, mustn't, they don't have to do anything else. There's no other multiple tasks that they have to do. It's not as if they're an entity that is saddled with multiple responsibilities. And it's quite clear that with load shedding there's a failure. Um, at ESCOM, including failures of governance and failures of leadership, um, which I'd play. <clears throat> and so we really need to deal with all those issues. There are other matters, of course, at ESCOM that we must look at. The municipal debt to ESCOM um, is one of the issues which is a problem so far as their revenue generation um, is concerned. We will deal with all of those things. <clears throat> but who's going to pay anything if there's no lights? So ultimately, in order for ESCOM to be sustainable and viable, it needs to provide the service and then generate the revenue. Then rather we deal with the secondary matters, not that they're not important, but at the, as the baseline is that the socio-economic risk which comes with load shedding um, continues to uh, uh, be something that is no longer uh, acceptable really in society. So I think it was important for us to remind the new board coming in that the mammoth responsibility on their shoulders is to turn ESCOM around so that it can actually not be dependent on bailouts. Um, they must not throw financial solutions to non-financial problems, which means restructuring um, the institution, um, and to make sure that they are going concerned. And so all those issues are at the heart of a, 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 an ESCOM that's functional. Mm -hmm. uh, an interesting mm -hmm. element to today's meeting was the presence of the SIU and the Hawks. What did you gauge from what they presented, considering the criminal cases that they're working on and what they found to be how some of these former employees within Eskom were operating in terms of defrauding the entity and conducting corruption. Well, we have fostered a very healthy and functional relationship with um, the SIU and the Hawks, but specifically um, the SIU as a committee, precisely because in order for us to deal with corruption, we need to be able to investigate it correctly. <clears throat> but you see, corruption is an after fact. Um, we, it, it, the preventative measures have to be there, but it's clear that they would have failed when the corruption has taken place. So that um, expertise of the SIU are very, very important here because they are then the baseline and base upon which you can have the interventions that are required. You would have noted that after they'd given, you know, the figures and <clears throat> dealt with the proclamations, they had a long set of observations that they presented. But the summary of it is that there is a criminal syndicate 
operating within the ESCOM energy space to take advantage of ESCOM at different material points. So whether it's the diesel industry, the coal industry, or the transportation industry, there is a conveyor belt of corruption taking place. <clears throat> it's precisely why, for example, we continue to take issue with ESCOM in so far as Gusile is concerned because the concept of Gusile power station, it's built on a coal mine so that they can mine the coal there and feed it into the, the power station. But as we speak now, some over 700 trucks are transporting coal every day into that power station. The risks of poor coal and corruption and stealing and looting was ventilated even by the CEO. And this is why we have warned against the lethargic, slow-paced, lies affair approach to dealing with um, all, all those issues. So what is quite clear <clears throat> from the SIU is confirming the observations that we had, but they have got now the forensic expertise to confirm this, that one of the biggest, biggest challenges and risks and threats to ESCOM is the collapse of the intelligence services in the country because we are unable to detect and deal with these syndicates that are at play. The CEO makes mention of coal leaving the country going to Mozambique and as far up as um, the DRC. Border management is obviously one of the issues that is a problem. There is no coordination in so far as <clears throat> you know, the law enforcement agencies dealing with so now what what has to uh, is that if ESCOM collapses as it's on the brink of collapse with looking at these, uh, uh, the, the, these blackouts and load shedding the country would have collapsed so they need to really wake up uh, to actually deal with um, these things. So they need You're saying they need to wake up and deal with these things <clears throat> quickly as we wrap up. You gave them 23 recommendations and in their presentation today, do you feel that they've been able to implement them? Well, some of them have been implemented. I mean, the main was the, 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 the essence of the recommendations that we had is to clean up the, fi the financial management integrity space um, of ESCOM to ensure that there's internal controls, there's due process, establish the governance structures and so on. And it's quite good that the board has come in and has reviewed the governance structures, adding new committees to sort of stabilize the management first because that's where things get done and then they can be able to roll out. So all these streams of work that, that are prevalent at ESCOM need to all move at the same time. You can't just focus on one. It needs to be a multi-focus approach and we got a sense that um, that is being done. But of course, they are not where they should be. We are not saying we are happy um, with ESCOM. The board is <clears throat> very, very new. Um, we can only give them the benefit of doubt that they will be able to achieve the things that they've said. All we have now is they, they've given us a statement of intent. But then the final point, at which is very, very important here, is that there has to be an understanding at ESCOM, and particularly the new board now, that they are ultimately where the buck stops and so far as the fiduciary responsibilities are concerned. And they must accept, in accepting the role, they must accept the responsibilities. So there's no obfuscation later on when accountability is placed on their table and the hard questions are hard asked and the difficult questions because ultimately they are the ones who are given the responsibility to take decisions and they must take decisions that take the institution forward. So and I think we conveyed that message quite successfully today and I hope that they've heard it and of course we'll be dealing with other matters. There is a follow-up visit that is mooted um, at the end of November to go again to ESCOM because as I said in the opening, ESCOM is a key priority for this committee. We have met with it 21 times, more than any other department or entity, because of its significant import in the country and for the economy. All right, thank you so thank much you for your time. Well, we'll wait for that visit then of SCOPA to uh, ESCOM's facilities. We'll watch how they will be tracking uh, that particular visit. And, of course, we'll play you, Stephen, an interview that we heard earlier on with uh, the newly appointed chairperson of Eskom's board and he was talking to us about uh, the different committees that they've established within uh, the board to take that entity forward. Artie Mtengana, thank you very much indeed. Do appreciate it live from Parliament this afternoon. In